Captain Marino, he's back. On team Flying Dutchman and his eternal buddy Armorlock Boy. They're playing as these guys. Shipmaster and Cutter. And on the other side we've got Epic Predator, never seen him before. And we've got Rugged Steak, never seen him before. They're playing as Cutter and Colony, which is a really interesting combo here. Together they're called Big Bean. And that will be interesting. Like I said before, I've never cast these guys before. I have no idea what to expect from them. So that Marine kind of got wrecked. This is a good start for Captain Marino. There's a third Marine on the way, but the Ghost can manage that by itself, especially with the ground support. Now we've got, however, the... Chopper coming up. That could clean up here with the Marine. It's suddenly looking good for Team Red. Picking up the entirety of the resource bundle. This is the third and last qualifier of our Amateur League Season 2, by the way. People will be taking home points and trying to qualify for the main event, which has a $250 prize pool. And big shout out to our website subscribers who are making this kind of stuff possible. Without you, we wouldn't be able to host tournaments. So, thank you. Make sure to collect your perks. If you want to join the club of the website subscribers, check out our YouTube description section or Twitch about section. It's all there. Double gen. Did not expect Rugged Stake not doing it. Hell, Rugged Stake is barely getting any mini bases. Is this gonna be some focus on the proxy? No, there's just a marine there. What is this? Looks like Rugged Stake is just gonna play standard. And take the mini bases after all. Or not. I got a lot of empty building plots. But it seems like Captain Marino will be able to benefit from that double generator. Same for Armor Lock Boy. Twitch chat is letting me know that Rugged Stake saved 18 people from falling from a falling bus. That's pretty amazing. Sounds like he's Spider-Man, but you can never believe what the media says these days. Fucking Spider-Man, dude. Don't trust these vigilantes either. Missed the skip chopper somehow. But it gets away and might be able to hide in the back. Although, Armorlock Boy doing a great job of running it down. Oh! Might still get to hide it like back here. This is a good spot to hide. Oh, he's giving up. Oh, that's huge. And it's over. <laughs> uh, only on one side of bad draw can you do this. It's totally unfair. There's even a pocket back there. It's so unfair. <laughs> Look, the other side. I guess you got this little angle to hide in, but it's nowhere near as big. Nothing behind here. And even on this side, you got a big, harsh cutoff. It's just not even comparable. Anyway, fight starting in the middle, but it's it's pretty one-sided, favoring Team Red. That's going to be the third power node and potentially the fourth. Lots of snipers here. We'll be able to neutralize the UNSC infantry. Even the Spartan isn't particularly great against the Hunter Captain without the stun and mine combo. Armorlock boy trying to expand in front of this, but that's probably not going to happen. Especially if our colony player gets to drop in, which there's a grunt right now. 
that could go to the main. There's two turrets, but the turret's not particularly good against Goliaths. Of course, Captain Marino, sorry, this is actually Armorlock Boy. If he can cross the map and do an ODST drop on the main base, there is essentially no defense here. So that could be a play. The Hunter Captain going home isn't exactly the best solution to things. You probably want to counterattack with those Goliaths. As for Captain Marino, is kind of on his lonesome back here. Lots of ghosts, which are not going to be great against this, but everything else they're going to be great against. I'm Lock Boy heading heading home. Not going for the ODST drop. He's going to use it on defense, I suppose, against the against the big boys. Got an anti infantry turret. Going to get the Spartan upgrade. Going to get Nightingales. Playing it very safe. The ghost can meanwhile take back the power nodes. At least to the best of their ability. That's probably not something you want to use the um, use on the hunter captain, which is I think already upgraded or not. Well, the is gonna hit, but the Spartan's not here to have a follow-up stun, which means the satchels are probably not gonna go off. Okay, one does. That's a big help. But all the ghosts, man, they're not in a sweet spot right now. Oh, the stunning beam. Oh, that's nice. Wow. That was beautiful. Don't fall over the satchels. Holy. Yikes. They're all gone. All the ODSCs are dead. What have you done? Armor up for you, Captain Marino. What have you done? That was not worth it. Uh, Captain Marino, time to go tier 3 soon. Wow. It's going to be nice timing. The buildings are already ready to pump the braves. Hunter Captain's going to come back to try to save the day. We'll need a handful of skits as well. And Predator is a little bit short on resources. It's never been a Goliath drop, so I'm not sure what he's saving the points for. We're gonna find out. Rugged Stake reaches tier 2, but doesn't have the buildings yet. Um, I guess he already is gonna make the Jerome from the minis. That's fine. But then Team Red has lost the power node control. They're starting to fall behind, I think. Is not a particularly hard hitting army, but it can scout up a little bit. Ooh, taking the Marauder. Nice value. Careful with the Gales. Don't want to lose it. Drop her. It's going to stun the Capitano. Should be easy enough to run it down. Especially while the drop turret's helping. But they're instead going to look for damage on the base. The harvester's an easy pick. Might as well go for it. I like the idea of running down this hunter captain. It, it can't really escape very easily. So, Going for the base itself though. I mean there are several rangers here. The ghosts are heavily out of position. The this place was he shipping? Yeah, displacement is an option. Taking a new marauder again, just raises the value of the Spartan again and again. Running into mines. Oh, yikes! And the Capitan does have self healing, so he's not gonna take actual damage. Harry Tuna says, I wish that Predator and Caterpillar were playing in one of these tournaments. Well, you got Predator. And you've got Caterpillar today, but he unfortunately didn't show. So your wish is kind of granted halfway. It's 
the best I can do. I'm happy enough that there's a good amount of people showing up to these. Spartan's gonna take that. ODST drop. Not really helping with the mine detonations. But the satchels are on. Oh wait, that's a blue one. Alright. So that's a bit of a 2v1 situation. Where are the wraiths? They're on the other side. Wrecking bases. The whole thing has been a distraction. And Captain Marino can displace that entire army whenever he wants. The choice rugged stakes expo. This is the big play. Armor lock boy just... He doesn't matter in this, guys. He... He does in the sense that he's distracting the entire red team by himself. Going to your free and staying safe behind it. That's... It's a pretty good accomplishment. Now the Raves can just go and vibe the main. There's two anti-vehicle turrets, so gotta be careful. But there's engineers. So at least someone can counter it. And we've got the damaged donut. Absolutely vibe the anti vehicle to saying he never stood a chance. Ultra missiles is almost irrelevant here. The Wraiths will just wreck this. That was a stunning mine attempt. Looks like the Capitano gets off a really nice taunt, but there's no turrets. Spartan might be in trouble, despite the good numbers for our UNSC troops. Drop turrets will help. Rugged stakes dead, man. He might get eliminated here if Captain Marino wants. Like, he can just take these bases and... It's a good night. Rugged stake is dead, man. Epic Predator also resigns. And that's a 1-0 for Flying Dutchman. Just need one more win. And they're off to the Losers Finals. Not bad at all. Leading currently 1-0. Flying Dutchman's doing pretty good. Let's see what they can do this time around. In the blue color, we've got Captain Marino. And Armor Lock Boy. Playing as Johnny and Atriox. And on the other side. Playing... In the red color, this is Rugged Stake. And we've also got Epic Predator. They're playing as... Atriox and Serena. And together, they're Big Bean. And Frontier's all about grabbing these minis, putting barracks on them, spamming units, and just being overall quite aggressive while hopefully not dying to the other team. Johnny... Uh, it can be okay. But I do like the Serena pick a little bit better. You just lock down that map so much more. Now, if you fill those bunkers, however, with snipers, that can go a long way and might be what we get to see. Also, thanks, Safety Guy, for the 100 bits. Much appreciated. Looking like pretty standard builds to me. Raid camp in the middle. And Armor Lock Boy will be doing the same. Uh, Captain Marino going for that early armory. And same for Armor Lock Boy. It should be timing out mostly fine. A little bit of idle time on that war council before. But it's a hero before units from the raid camp. That's something to keep in mind. So this will be idle for a while. However, there's time to grab a power node real quick. These guys hurry up. Um, Captain Marino could definitely spend a little bit more on Marines or... Oh, this minibase isn't done, that's why. Seems a little late to only finish it now. Right, taking over. One power node, the other team's only just starting on it. Not ideal. 
Where have we been, Rugged Steak? Oh, no, 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 don't do that either. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I really need to make Halo Wars guides, I think. You gotta use your grunt. When you have this many, you really just take your grunt, start the capture process, the rest will shoot it down almost as fast. And you'd already have the power node, and now he's walking away. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like to backseat too hard when I cast. Try to focus on the action and not criticize the players too much, but that was a blunder. Now, Epic Predator will fix it. But sometimes the Marines just don't listen, and you have to go back and do another order. That's on the game. This should work. But sometimes it doesn't. Anywho. Captain Marino. Captain Marino. Hiding behind the... Mines is a really smart choice. Picks off the suicide grunts as well and might actually get to bully Rugged Stakes mini base. Ice Cream Chuck coming in though to be trouble. And if the bunker doesn't get dropped into the ice, a Johnny player should be in a pretty good spot here as well. Some good suicide connections coming in. Into the Chosen now, that's a little less good. That mini base will definitely go down. I suppose the Suisse will take several of the grunts with them. But that's totally acceptable considering the results. Yeah, Armor Lock's Lock Boy's mini base will last a little longer. Now, Captain Marino will have to hold this location on his own. Keeps the power node clear, but it's a trade off mini bases, so essentially not much has happened. Team Blue, however, is gonna end up with more overall power node control for the game, unless, of course, this ball of death can stick together and nothing can pick them apart. These two are really separated right now. And I gotta say, Armor Lock Boy's army is not impressive enough. He's trying to expand, but they're going to lose middle map control for this. Left a node for Serena to capture. That's a good point. That is a good point. But when the power node is idle for one minute plus, it's not worth it. So in that case, that that is such a good point though, safety guy. You're right, I shouldn't have criticized that maybe. Because when Serena captures it, you actually get to generate the ice. However, if it doesn't work out, it's a lot of time loss. And that power node isn't particularly important to have ice over. Because you'll be having a fight in front of your minibase, not behind it. Anyway. Let's focus on what's important. Death Ball has split up, but they're combining again. And Epic Predator is in tier 2. Heavy Cryo Cannon is coming in. As well as Scorch Rounds. So, this train is gonna be rather difficult to stop. Captain Marina will have to come in to help, man. Can't ignore this. Both Chosen will be tier 2 momentarily. Oh, that's some nice detonations, but. Ice cream truck. Ay ay ay.
Here come the Mantis, though, and that will turn this whole thing upside down. Oh my god, that's a sandwich if we've ever seen one. Oh, those mines. Oh. Still, most Marines actually stayed alive. Just barely, but they're alive. The Mantis and the Chosen can run this ice cream truck down easily enough. No problem at all. And down it goes, maybe? Yeah, I think so. I think it's dead. John is a little low. If Captain Marino just upgrades that. Oh, he's tier 3? Get out of here. He can get a tier 3 Johnny. Gotta get rid of that barracks, man. Get a new base. And all that stuff. Amarok Boy on 48 pop, Captain Marino on 68, Epi Pedro on 19, and Rugged Stake on 43. If they clash now, that would be a problem. Oh, these hogs are gonna get cleaned up by the Mantis. Absolutely brutal. Wow. This army is all the hopes. Is there anything behind this? No, it's just tier 2 units, so... Yeah, Captain Marino can go bonkers. And either get out to tier 3 Mantis or start making Colossus. Colossus are mega expensive though, and Armor Lock Boy can't right now support the economy here. They're all up tier 2 armies. But all these rangers should be able to deal with all that. We'll need some hunters in the mix for those but maybe the mantis are sufficient game's kind of stabilizing as predator is getting back into it he's going to your free himself maybe we'll start seeing vultures or just working towards the big drop which i think just got unlocked that would be nice One more mini base exchange. This isn't looking good for Team Red, man. Guys, only getting more and more solid over time. Armorlock boy going tier 3. He's shielded. He's got anti-vehicle turrets. So the Marauders can't do anything. And if his two armies combine, that's a lot of mantis. Captain Marino's at 80 pop. He does not have the laser pointers. Oh, he does have laser pointers. The whole gauze thing is now done, so... Beam still doing plenty of damage through the invulnerability, of course. Oh! Tier 2 Banished Arm is just gone. Well, actually, they're half frozen, so they can be healed up there. Killing the Chosen and the Mantis just ruffles down through everything, although they're frozen themselves. A bunch of them have gone down, the Kodiaks being an absolute pain, along with the Ice Cream Chuck, who's also being a pain. That's a lot of Kodiaks, and there's also starting to be Scorpions, which would wreck these. 
Do I be careful with that? You guys are very separated right now. I'm not sure that's the best play, but EMP Mech Blast will stun the tanks. Which means both get taken down. Oh, that's a great drop. That's a great drop from Epic Predator. Well done. Old man is a toast. Very nice comeback. That definitely made up for the uh, early game attention with the power node. Which was, wasn't even his fault. It's just the marine being stupid. Team Red once again has hopes and dreams. Should move up to Kodiak and help with the push. I think they can actually push. Captain Million on 45 pop. Trying to remake the Mantis might not be the best play. Gets a free generator there. Yeah, it might be time for Colossus here. It's got a good number of Mantis though for now. Upgrade coming in, Wraith's coming in, and that's Rifled Barrel done, I think. Yes it is. Tank numbers rising. I'm gonna be staying on tanks for a while. Epic Predator probably should have been looking for a population increase rather than the vehicle upgrade for the moment. Let's see what those mantis can do. If if there's a pelican they could go across the map and very quickly mess things up. But it looks like Flying Dutchman is more interested in just being defensive and sticking together. Trying to macro up as Captain Marina reaches 100 population cap. No one else has yet. But that's definitely what Armor Lock Boy should be doing. He's getting Scorch instead. Which, I mean, that could work out. If they can somehow EMP Mech Blast the tanks and then Scorch them, they're probably just gonna disappear. I like it. Big Mantis Ball. Probably don't need to come back for this. The turret will take care of it. Oh, that's a nice pick off. When the building gets damaged, you don't get back the resources, so... It's all a percentile system. If it's 50% damage, you only get back half. Trying to sell it like that. So every bit of damage you can get on an unfinished base is super valuable. Well, there's hunters, there's Oh oh here it comes what I said, exactly what I said, but there's a counter beam on the Wraiths. Big issue. And they'll get all taken down. Oh my god, that beam was great. There's nothing left. Tanks are still going. And this is Big Bean's chance to make a difference here and come back in the series, making the score 1 to 1 if they can. But they first have to go through this Mantis army. Which has something to say about that. You're gonna be sniped down. Nice nuke. Armor Lock Boy just not ready to engage right now. Punker nowhere near strong enough to hold against this nonsense. And 
one tank goes down. Now Armor Lock Boy is the one to try to hold the exit. Is he gonna eradicate this? He's almost got the resources. No, 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 he's gonna make his army invulnerable. Turning to Captain Marino to do the work. Still gonna lose several units though. But they've held. That's what matters. They're alive. I'm getting the vulture. We've got rugged stake expands. He's got a good amount of population here. That there just continues making tanks. And vultures. We've got 100 population space. And more of that good stuff coming soon. As I said many, many times, it's difficult to take this on. Hey, this could be good. If Armor Lock Boy gets to snipe this base, that's huge. Rugged stake. Still plenty of time left until that shield completes, it seems. Why isn't it showing up, man? Two seconds. Oh, the shield. It's gonna save the base. You have got to be joking me. Meanwhile, they're going after Captain Marino, who's all by himself, getting dropped on, getting mined. Wow, dude, he's about to lose all his mantis. This is savagery. The anti vehicle turrets doing a pretty good job of attempting to hold. Oh, that's the mother of all EMP Mac blasts. All the stuff is gone. Very little left. And Mantis, I think, clean up. Oh my god. That wasn't even the combo or anything. Imagine if that had been beamed. Meanwhile, the base is destroyed and Captain... Uh, sorry, Armor Lock Boy is coming back to help out. That was such a good defense. 1v2 getting to hold and then punishing whatever is left which is nothing um, there's a bit of a teleport situation saving at least a hun handful of hunters if they get healed up then it's great if they get run down however by the raves that's that's a problem it looks like they're in the clear but this train doesn't stop I think Of course, Captain Marino wants the healing without using the beacons, so he's gonna run through the healing area. <laughs> They're having to rebuild from scratch, that's annoying. He's had such a high tier army and now it's like gonzo. now expanding this is a pretty peaceful game overall <laughs> captain marino building up to 120 population same with armor lock boy dude if rugged stakes stakes at 80 he's in serious trouble he's just making wraiths epic predator trying to get to 120 it will take a while but if two armies of 120 show up these guys are gonna be down 40 population man Yeah, this is looking deadly as hell. Both players having access to an invulnerability, so you can't even just get rid of that with... Oh wait, the invulnerabilities were used on those! 
I blame J I blame James. Oh, well, rebuilding time. Basically getting punished. There's no way to save it right now. These guys are too far away, even with teleport. Even with teleport, this goes down. Although that didn't have to be the case. You know, respond fast enough. Scorpions, Nightingales for cosplaying Isabel now. Most tanks aren't meant to be. Oh, what's going on here? That's Scorchers, actually. Those are from mines. And there's the eradication. Where's the heal? Where's the heal? Oh. Well. A little late for that. Mantis are in trouble though. Ooh. Good EMP mech blast. Now they're gonna get doubled, so... Yeah, I'm not sure how Predator can save his base. Mostly just can't. Man, Marino just got cleaned up though. <laughs> gotta give him that. To Wonderland, is that gonna freeze over the raves? Maybe some of them. Still, Predator's base, I don't know, man. It's getting healed. There's invulnerability for the Trox army. Ah, oh, the engineer's trying to heal it. There's enough Reavers anyway to take care of it. And Predator's base is gone. These guys just refuse to freeze. So unfortunate. Should have frozen frozen over three times now, but I think I think this is it. This is it for Big Bean. Gonna have to make do with fourth place, I think, because this army is coming for them, and it's coming now. It's, it's no waiting. Way more wraiths than can be handled. Although that anti-vehicle turret is sure showing them who's boss. There's an invulnerability slash heal though, but it's getting beam toot. Oh, it's disappeared. They're getting shattered. That's a nice drop right there. First armor lock boy was afraid. He was petrified and armor locked. Now his friend Captain Marino can maybe solve this issue for him. Those mantis coming in. There's no anti vehicle turrets this time. Barely any braves. Alright. Epic Predator, I'm sorry, but you're toast, man. That was a good attempt. And I'm super glad these guys joined the tournament. Flying Dutchman just a little too solid, but it's certainly within reach. Like, this could have gone the other way. A little practice. 
leader combo was really good. But what if... What if that endgame army hadn't been tanked? Tank based, but rather vulture based. Maybe that would have been the play. Well then to Flying Dutchman though, they're going to the Losers Finals today. And not bad by Big B neither. Not bad. We want to thank our MetaPlace website subscribers. Your contribution helps us keep the project sustainable. As we reach higher subscription goals, you are helping us cover more and more behind the scenes costs such as video editing. Check out our subscription page using the link in the description and remember to collect your perks. We will see you the next time.